former military governor of Kaduna State, Colonel Abubakar Dangiwa Umar, has said that the Buhari administration has so far exhibited poor skills in its management of Nigeria's diversity. He said it was disturbing that the federal government was according to undue or was according undue attention to the threats of separatist movements in contrast to the ones posed by bandits, kidnappers and insurgents in the northern region of the country. He also stated that the apparent failure of the security forces to deal decisively with security threats is due to the shortage of manpower and equipment. Well, joining us to discuss this is Namdi Abanaba and uh, Chinedu Ifechilobi, both of them political analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thanks a lot, Maria. Thanks for having us. Great. I I'm going to start with you. So the former military governor of um, Kaduna State is literally putting the president on the chopping board here uh, and saying that the president is paying attention to things that do not need his att attention that much. But then really, if you look at what's happening in the pockets of violence, whether it be in the southeast or in the southwest, um, should the president not also come down heavily on, on the perpetrators of those acts or the seeming perpetrators of those acts? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, security threats are what they are. Anything that destabilizes any region and um, puts the people's mind on edge, you know, anything that makes the people uncomfortable should be dealt with by the president. Um, they are, like I said, security threats are what they are. So I agree with you that the president should, as a matter of fact, uh, clamp down on any movement or any, any group of people who are doing anything by any means, you know, that seems to threaten, threaten the, the security or the peace of the country. But then um, I also have the people who are saying that there should be no form of cherry picking. As a matter of fact, you should not um, pursue one and then leave another because, you know, it begs the question, what's What's, what, 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 what informs, you know, the cherry picking? What informed um, the fact that, you know, you're pursuing one and then you're allowing the other to fester? You know, it begs the question. So maybe someone needs to explain that. And, you know, you, you, you now begin to understand why people are crying. You know, the tribal insinuations around the whole thing. Because it now seems as if, um, some people are excused to do what they are doing while others are not. Either way, you know, these people threaten the security, the peace of the nation. These people threaten the livelihood because where there is no peace, um, the, the value, the quality of life tends to reduce and all should be given equal attention. But, but then... Um... If you know, I'm sure that you have been following the news with all of that's been happening in the southeast, for example. Police officers were attacked. Mm -hmm. Police stations were burned down. Um, INEC officers. I mean, this is a direct attack on government facilities. We're not, and I'm not in any way saying that these government facilities are more valuable than the human lives that are lost you know, to banditry or Boko Haram. But these are serious, sensitive issues that needed to be dealt with. Uh, so really, can we say that the president was cherry picking? Really, I mean, if if that issue was not dealt with, would we still not be pointing fingers at the presidency? And of course, of course. Like I said, I agree with you that um, this situation has the same level of urgency that um, Boko Haram, the the activities of band, the activities of um, what do you call them now, Fulani herdsmen as well you know it has the same urgency but then um the, the 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 these other issues that i mentioned have been in existence before this particular one it has been in existence and it has festered more, more or less more or less unfettered there was you know more or less no 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 address nobody was addressing these issues and nigerians were wondering what's happening is it because this was coming from one side of the country. I mean, the, the, the thing is, knowing what Nigeria is, every leader of the country should ensure that they don't give opportunity for people to begin to have tribal suspicions. 
and this has caused, you know, um, the tribal suspicion in Nigeria between 2015 and now to grow in leaps and bounds. You know, the fact that the, the, the menace of Fulani Hetman, the menace of the bandits, the menace of Boko Haram, you know, is costing the country so much. And it's, it's a problem. It's a major problem for Nigeria. And like I said, it has been in existence before all this. It should have been tackled before now. If these have been sorted out before now, at this point, you know, that also has this same level of urgency and importance and that threatens the peace of the country as well, we wouldn't have, you know, people now making comparisons. And I agree with you, there should be no comparison. A threat to, sec to peace and security is threat to peace and security and it should be handled accordingly. Okay, let me go to you, Namdi. Um, I'd like to quote Colonel Umar directly. He says, um, this clearly is an exaggeration of the security threat Namdi Kanu and indeed IPOP pose to our nation's security and unity. It's quite strange and he says it's disturbing that the federal government um, is according on due attention to the threats of separatist movements um, in contrast to the more daunting ones posed by bandits, kidnappers, insurgents in the northwest, in some parts of the north central and in the northeast. He goes on to say that those criminal activities have resulted in the evacuation of over 20 of the villages in the north and uh, the northwest and the northeast. Um, hundreds are being murdered and maimed every week, many more kidnapped for ransom. And one of the examples we can give is what happened in Kaduna a few days ago in less than 24 hours. In fact, in the space of 24 hours, uh, two abductions took place. Um, but really, um, just like Chinedu has said, one has been festering and the other is as a, an offshoot of the one that has been festering. Why do you think that Nigerians are so critical of Mr. President's handling of insecurity in the country? Yes, um, the president has been making, um, should I call it, false promises. Um, we've heard severally um, where the president made proclamations about um, about the bandits, how the, the service chiefs are going to deal with them. He has made such proclamations, but it has not really been backed up with um, the requis requisite action. My result is the name of the game. We want to see results. The human security crisis that we are facing in Nigeria is quite unfortunate on a daily basis. It has become a daily affair. People are being killed in their hundreds. Students are being kidnapped. Infants are being kidnapped too. Look at what is happening in Kaduna State. It is. It is quite unfortunate. It's as if we do not have a government in the country at the moment. Remember that um, the primary concern of government is the security of lives and property. And the federal government um, has failed in providing security for, for Nigerians. And this is the reason, one of the reasons why we are having um, some ethnic warlords, in quote, coming out to defend, to defend their territory. If the Nigerian police force and the Nigerian military, if they've been able to call the menace of, you know, the bandits, the terrorists, I don't think that the nation will be facing what it is facing today. You also look at the human security question. Hundreds of Nigerians are dying. Many people are displaced. We have so many, so many refugees. Instead of the, of the president to focus squarely, squarely on acts of terrorism being perpetrated by both the Boko Haram and the bandits, he's um, busy chasing around ethnic, ethnic, some ethnic jingoists. I think it's um, a misplaced uh, pri priority. Look at Boronu State, for instance. We were, it was announced the other day that the vocal, members of the Boko Haram sect, that they now have a governor in an entity here in Nigeria, which is quite unfortunate. We, sh we shouldn't be hearing of things like that. So we really need to understand how the federal government is tackling the crisis. The president has been making promises upon promises upon promises 
but there are no results. So what do you what do you think the challenge is, Namdi? What do you think the challenge of Mr. President is? Because yes, you have pointed out rightly that the president has been making promises. What do you think the challenge is for Mr. President not being able to keep those promises? Um, do you think his hands are tied? Do you think that because that may, there's so many allegations against Mr. President, there's so many people who have made all kinds of assertions, but really as a Nigerian citizen and someone who's analyzing it from a political standpoint, is there any politics at play or do you think that the person of the president is a bit overwhelmed? Is it the security forces that are overwhelmed? What exactly do you think the challenge is? I don't, I don't think that the security forces are overwhelmed. I think it has to do with, um, with the leadership and um, those that are giving the, sec the technical um, security advice. Then you also have the issue of um, arms, and, uh, arms and ammunition. We've had cases where members of the military protested that they don't have the requisite um, military hardware to deal with these, these uh, terrorist groups. So these, these are what some of the some of the fundamental challenges that, that are plaguing um, the fight against, against insurgency and against acts, acts of terror. Okay. Additionally, additionally, you also look at, um, you look at the, the, the Constitution, the way the Nigerian uh, security architecture is, is constituted. Nigeria is a plural society. And we expect that in the leadership of the armed forces, every 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 section of the country ought, ought to be represented, so that it won't be mis, it won't be misconstrued that you know that the fight against terrorism and insurgency is being um, jeopardized by those with certain um, ethnic sentiments. Those sentiments are there, and it is the responsibility of the president to see to it that he gets rid of this sectors. Who are the people that constitutes the, the security um, architecture of, of this country? Okay. I think that every part of the country must play a role in securing um, our country. Let me go back to Chinedu. Um, now, the, the, the former military governor also spoke about the diversity of Nigeria and the fragility of our nationhood, and that that should be prioritized by uh, the president. Um, and and you, made mis you made mention of the fact that, you know, it's become more pronounced, the division, the, divi the lines that we have uh, as Nigerians, that it's become more and more, you know, um, widened because of all of the insecurity that's going on in the country. Uh, what role do you think that governors need to play in, in blurring these lines? Because um, uh, many pundits have also said that the reason why these lines continuously are blurred is because politicians take advantage of the fact that we're divided along political and, uh, sorry, religious and ethnic lines, and they keep playing us to the gallery. How do we as a people and how do governors also play a role in, you know, somewhat blurring those lines going forward if we must continue to have a state that is not as fragile as it is today? Well, the, the truth is, um, in a democracy, um, people expect, like Nam said, result is the name of the game. I don't think that um, we need to begin to concentrate on our, our, our diversity, on our tribal or ethnic diversity in any way. It's totally not necessary. I've always said or I've, I've always held this view that um, we, 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 we don't need to bend towards what we now call federal character or you know what we call stoning in our political consciousness. We don't need that. What we need is um, um, the best hands that we have at positions. You know, someone has said, and I agree that it seems like we have the worst of us leading the best of us. You know, and in the last um, a, a, a elections, I, I have that personal um, a belief that we had people who could lead this country effectively who did not succeed in becoming um, presidents or gov the president or governors or senators or what have you, right? What we need is delivery of, of, of democratic dividends. That's what we need. The people need their voices heard. The people are hungry. Nigeria is the last, the last check. Nigeria is 70% of, of Nigeria's population live below the poverty line. That is crazy. And I, I, I tend to believe that 
that statistic is is a little bit um, uh, moderate, if you if 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 you may. Yeah. I think that more Nigerians live below the poverty line that is that is stated that we agree with. So what we need is someone or a group of politicians or leaders who would deliver the dividends. If we have good roads, if we open our taps um, and through the government our taps are running, and if the economy is good, if the GDP is healthy, if 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 people can can feed, if people can take their children to good schools, if people can drive on good roads and we all have to that, go. you know, Nigerians won't bother about the the tribe of who is ruling or where the person is coming from. Come okay. back to the state level now. It's down to senatorial zones and local governments and localities where governors and leaders come from. It's totally not necessary. What okay. we need is the best of us ruling. All of us. That's All right. what we need. When and we have that, there will be no need, you know, to begin to consider where, you know, our tribal uh, diversity and all that and what, what happens to that. All right. Thank you, Chinedu. Uh, Chinedu Fechilobi and Namdi Abanaba, our political analysts. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Well, thank you all for staying with us. Time is not on our side. We have to go now. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, no, we'll see you on Monday with brand new stories on Plus Politics. I am Mariana Cole. Be a good Nigerian.